Hi, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, uncertainty analysis, and more specifically, uh, when we have an independent measurement. Um, this is, for example, if you are um, measuring something that uh, doesn't need to be calculated using an equation, it just has uncertainties in itself. Uh, for example, let's say we um, are measuring the pressure of the atmosphere, atmosphere, and our sensor, uh, given by the manufacturer, has a couple different errors in it. Uh, for example, it could have a linearity error. Uh, so we could say the linearity error is maybe 0.2% uh, of the reading. Um, and we could have a hysteresis error uh, of maybe, let's say, um, 0.5% of the full-scale output, and maybe um, um, we take several measurements um, using our pressure sensor at a time really quickly, and we find that we get an average pressure measurement of, let's say, um, 15 psi, but out of those several measurements, we also get a standard deviation of about, uh, let's say, 0.2 psi. Um, and so, this what this means is, uh, out of all of our measurements, we get some sort of distribution. We have a mean of about 15, but this 0.2 gives us an idea of how wide or how uncertain um, our measurements were. And this, this. Uh, Taking mean standard deviation shows that we have some sort of random error that we uh, have trouble accounting for. Um, uh, however, these other two errors we should also consider, and these are systematic errors, uh, and they're assumed to always affect the output. Um, how you use the linearity error is, um, again, it depends on the reading, 0.2% uh, of the reading, and our reading was 15 psi. How you deal with the hysteresis error? Well, it says it's 0.5% of the full-scale output. We need to know our full-scale output of this sensor, and so we'd have to look at the manufacturer specifications, and we could maybe say, let's let's say our pressure reading can measure um, somewhere be anywhere between uh, minus um, 30 uh, to positive 30 psi. So there's our full-scale output. So now we we have three. Uh, measurements of error, we have our standard deviation, which shows our random error, and then our two systematic errors. And how we combine these is we say the the total uncertainty of our pressure is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of our systematic um, bias errors and the sum of our uh, squares of our precision errors. Um, uh, so, uh, now what we need to do is combine these. So our, our uh, first two systematic errors, or bias errors, um, are going to be first 0.2% uh, of our reading. So we can take 0 0.002 times our reading, which was 15 psi squared, plus... Our second um, bias error, which was our hysteresis, so that's 0.5%, so 0.005 times the full scale output. Um, our full scale output can go between minus 30 and positive 30, so that's a, a range of 60 psi. So we're going to multiply that by 60 psi and square it. And that gives us our sum of our b's. Now we need to sum our p's all under this. Uh, radical, so we're going to add um, plus our uh, sigma. Now, one sigma is only 63% of the area. We want two sigmas to give 95% of our area. This gives us a 95% confidence interval. So we're going to take two times our standard deviation, so 0 0.02 psi, and square that. And all of that is underneath our radical. And we can calculate that value. 
Oops, just noticed uh, I made a small error here. Our starting deviation is not 0 0.02, but it's actually uh, point, uh, point 0.2. So we need to, I'll just uh, write a big bold 2 over that, <laughs> like I do in class. Um, so now we can calculate that. Um, square root, sum of the squares, uh, all that together gives us a total error of uh, 0. Point, about 0. 0.5 psi. So now what we can say with this is we uh, have a 95% confidence that our pressure is the mean plus or minus that error. So we're 95% sure that our measurement is 15 plus or minus 0 0.5 psi. So that's a short example on how to compare or how to uh, combine the uncertainties of uh, an independent measurement.